on, give your neighbor a good Sunday night welcome. Hey, Miss Williamson, how you doing, sister? Turn it on now. Yeah, it shouldn't even be on. I'll tell you. Hey, y'all. Hey, sister, how you doing? God Jimmy? bless you. Yes, sir. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. Hey, how you doing? Yes, sir. You'll be playing that band. Son, you come on around and Brother Steve and they're going to do the special for us tonight. Hey, hey, Brad. How you doing, Brad? She's got the baby at home. Oh, okay. Hey, I'll tell you, you ask about it. Okay. <laughs> Since tonight we do have some of the Dunn lawyers here, I think this song wasn't planned this way, but I think it'll be appropriate. Even when you got a dark time, he's still the light. Amen. He walks in those dark places. That's right. I love all y'all here tonight. And I was going to sing a different song, but I'm going to try to do this one so y'all cry. Mary. God wants the dark hills. The ways the
sometimes fail to realize that when we're in the house of God and everything's going well for us, that there might be another brother or another sister, my things might not be going as well for them. We don't ever want to forget, pray one for another. The Bible tells us that. And one day you'll be the one on the receiving end. And you're going to need those prayers. So you need to be giving them up when you're not the one that's in need. So it'll come back to you when you are the one that is in need. Well, somebody asked me, and I know they were joking, but they said, after the service tonight, you are going to put the Super Bowl on the screens, aren't you? I said, yeah, I'll tell you what, just have a seat after the service. Or pick you out a seat where you can see real well. We'll cut the lights off so you can see. And we're going to leave later. Yeah. Just leave them sitting there. That's kind of like spiritual snipe. Fun. Yeah. That's you right. know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Amen. Turn with me tonight to Psalm number 95. Psalm number 95. So as I told you this morning, I'm, uh, not tonight since I did it this morning, but the next few Sunday nights, uh, I am going to do a series on what the Bible says about finance and money. And I'm not just talking only about the subject of tithing, but how God will bless you. And I know a lot of people don't even want to hear the word tithe, but it is in the Bible. Amen. But I'm not going that route. I'm just talking about things that will help you. See, the Bible not only deals with eternal life and spiritual things, but God wants you to be blessed in this life and be happy now. Amen. Amen. So we'll share some of those things with you. Uh, but tonight, uh, since I'm normally going to do it on Sunday night, but I knew it was supposed to rain, knew we had a lot of sickness and uh, this thing they call a ball game going on tonight. So I did it this morning. So, uh, But starting next week, we'll be back on that for a few Sunday nights. Psalm number 95. Would you stand tonight? As we do honor and reverence God's Word, and I'm so appreciative of you being here tonight, I promise we're not going to keep you long in case anybody still might actually be a football fan. No. Whatever that is. Psalm number 95 and verse 1. The Bible says, O come... Let us sing unto the Lord. Sister, that's what you just did tonight. Choir, that's what you just did tonight. Uh, we came, we gathered together, we tried to become one in the sight of God and be in unity. And we've offered up uh, some praise to God through song. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Now listen, now sister, you did a good job and uh, we got great singers here, but I've never laid claim to be much of a singer. I got a bullfrog voice. But 
But you know, the Bible said you don't have to sound with perfection and you don't have to be one that hits every note. The Bible said as long as you come and make a joyful noise to Him, a God would be pleased. Oh, I'll eventually read the verse. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto Him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods, little g, O-D-S. In His hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is His also. The sea is His and He made it. And His hands formed the dry land. Yes, yes. Oh come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord uh, our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Amen. There's a word in verse 6 that caught my attention. To these that are not very spiritually discerned, it would sound like something very elementary. But in the word in verse six, you'll find the word worship. Amen. Can I tell you tonight that there's some people who've been at church many times, but they probably never one time worship. I want to speak to you a little bit tonight. I don't have some catchy title or uh, anything like that tonight. I just simply want to speak to you tonight about worship, what it is. Why we ought to do it. Let's look at that subject tonight. We'll let you out in plenty of time. Uh -oh. <laughs> to watch 11 o'clock news. Yeah. That's right. No, we won't. Our Father, we bow tonight in your presence. And Father, we come before you, as the Bible said, uh, and not we tried our best tonight to follow the pattern of uh, every service uh, of Psalm number 95. Uh, Lord, we come. Uh, we realize that there's a certain place uh, that we need to gather. And God, you told us in the Word of God not to forsake uh, uh, the assembling of ourselves together to worship. And God, then we come uh, and we sing uh, uh, praises uh, unto you. And God, we come in the house of God tonight as the uh, psalm also said with thanksgiving we thank you God for every answered prayer thank you God for everything you've done for us God you've been so good even though Lord we haven't always been good toward you you've always been good uh, uh, toward us uh, and Father we look on in the Bible tonight and see that the God we're serving uh, is not some puny uh, little God uh, but Lord you're a great God uh, and you're a God over all other gods uh, of little g-o-d-s uh, and Father I pray to God tonight that we realize that you and you alone would be worthy uh, of worship uh, and I pray that every man, every woman every young person, everybody here tonight would not be satisfied uh, just to come uh, and to be a spectator uh, I pray God tonight that every one of us would come into the house of God with the intent tonight to, to worship. That's right. Help us, God, we pray. We ask it in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen and Amen. Thank you. And you may be seated tonight. Well, let me begin tonight by saying a lot of people. They don't understand what the word uh, uh, worship means. Uh, and a lot of people tonight, they have absolutely no clue what true worship, what real worship is. Uh, some people got the wrong idea. Some people 
people say, well, in church, uh, they're having a worship service. Uh, so if they're having a worship service, uh, and if I'm there, and if I'm in it, that makes me a worshiper. No, it does not. It doesn't make you a worshiper just by being in a worship service any more than being in a barn makes you a horse. Right. Hey man, you can be in a carport, but it don't make you a Cadillac. <laughs> Somebody give me an amen. amen. Worship is not just being in a worship service. As a matter of fact, I'll say this tonight. I preached in a lot of places uh, over almost 40 years, uh, and I've been in some uh, where I don't think anybody worships. Hey, I went and did a revival a while back, and that church was so cold, uh, the ushers wore ice skates. <laughs> <laughs> or they should have. Right. You know, always, you never know on Super Bowl Sunday night what might happen. I told a story one time about this preacher, and he told that crowd, he said, all right, now don't you turn out to be a bunch of hypocrites. You be in church tonight, even if it is Super Bowl Sunday night. There was one deacon, he knew he couldn't be absent, but oh, he was a football fan. He took him a transistor radio, put it in the back of his pants, run the wire up his shirt. Came out his collar and put that little earpiece in there. He's sitting back there in the church and he's listening to the ball game. Everybody else is a singing and a shouting and having them a good time. And all of a sudden the team he was pulling for, that quarterback broke through the line and started down the field. He jumped up. He said, yes, yes, go. And revival broke out and seven people got saved. Good. Good. So... It's Super Bowl Sunday night. I hope somebody will worship tonight. Can I say tonight, just by the fact we're having a worship service, you're not a worship prayer just because you're in a worship service. I can promise you when people go to church, which is a worship service, and here they are. Yeah. 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 They got that glassy-eyed look and their mind's about 40 miles somewhere else. Honey, I promise you one thing. They might be in a worship service, uh, but they're not worshiping. Uh, and there's a difference. Let me tell you, even Mr. Webster, the dictionary man, got it partially wrong. He said to the word, I looked it up to make sure. But Webster's Dictionary says that worship is religious reverence. Well, I believe in being reverent toward God. But that Muslim tonight's got religious reverence. The Buddhist has got religious reverence toward Buddha. Somebody give me an amen. amen. That's really not it either. Let me tell you what real worship is. I hope somebody will get in on it. But let me tell you what worship is. That's when you forget where you're at. You say, Brother Sam, are you trying to talk me into I'm not even paying it? No, I'm talking about when you get so contacted or so connected in with God that you're not aware of who's sitting beside you. You're not aware of who's in front of you. And your mind is on things above. And you make contact with heaven. And God is speaking to your heart. And listen, you're worshiping back. It's just a give and a take. It's a flow. And that flow's coming from the throne room of God. Uh, all the way down to your soul and you're just being encouraged uh, and you're being blessed uh, and in spite of your valley uh, you're being picked up and you feel the presence uh, of God then say when you're doing you might catch yourself shouting That's right. you might catch yourself crying or you might just sit there kind of quiet connected to God But whatever you do, you're not doing it to be seen. Because you're not even aware that anybody else is in the house. Just you and God. Mister, when you, when you, when you blah, blah, everybody else out. 
and you're not doing anything to be seen, but yet you're not ashamed to do what you do, and you get connected in with God, it's just like taking that power cord and putting that in a receptacle, and power begins to flow. And listen, I know I get a little boisterous sometimes, but when that hair starts standing out on the back of my neck, when I start feeling God, and I know He's real, and the Spirit begins to speak to my heart, and my Spirit begins to bear witness with that spirit and then man it starts feeling good I know it's not about feeling but sure it's good when you do feel and know that God as real you will be aware of his presence and you'll be so plugged into God that God will be flowing to your heart some people might just lift their hands and say that others of us might Man, but isn't it good when God confirms His presence to you? When God shows up to the point that you know that you have been in the presence of the Almighty. When you know that He's real. And furthermore, you realize that you're not worthy to go into the presence of a holy God. But mister, in spite of our sin, in spite of our shortcomings, in spite of our faults and our failures, this loving, gracious God will allow us to go up into His presence and shout and give Him praise and give him glory and when you get connected to him then and only then can you say your worship daydreaming in church is not worship sitting in church bitter and mad you know what there's a Hebrew word called poochie Somebody mad, somebody angry. Hey, listen to me, let's just get real. There's a devil out there. I'm not talking about a booger man. I'm not talking about the figment of somebody's imagination. I'm talking about a real devil. And I guarantee you, uh, there are more fusses on Sunday morning on the way to church uh, than there are all week long. And then Sunday afternoon before you make it back to church. You know why? That devil is trying to sidetrack you so that you cannot uh, uh, be in position to worship, uh, to get uh, uh, connected to God and have that flow uh, from God uh, down to your soul. Mm. I'm talking about worship. Man. I love that old song, I'm on the winning side. I'm glad that I know tonight that I'm not a loser. I want you to know tonight you maybe hadn't made your million yet. Yet. Maybe you haven't done all kinds of great things. And the world might look at you as an ordinary person. But let me tell you one thing tonight with authority. You, if you belong to God, you are not a loser. I'm on the winning side. I don't know if I ever told you I probably have. Let me tell you why that song stirs my heart so much. First of all, I just like it. I like the words. I like the music. And I like everything about it. But years ago, Curtis Hudson, who had been a pastor outside of Atlanta, great pastor, built one of the smallest churches in Georgia to the largest church in the state of Georgia. They took note of it. and He eventually became the director of the Sword of the Lord Foundation. Oh, Curtis was a great man. I always thought the world of him. Well, Curtis ended up with cancer. They finally told him, said he had told him and his family that he's not going to live. He didn't have long. So they sent out, and I was so privileged, and I do say privileged. I'm not saying this thinking I'm somebody. I'm nothing but old sinner saved 